Johnny Dollar. This is Al Turner at New Britain Mutual. Hi, Al. What goes with you these days? Well, Johnny, one of our important clients is very anxious to get in touch with you. Says that she's an old friend of yours. Oh, who's that? Her name is Mrs. Virginia Haskell. Virginia Haskell? That's right. Uh, sorry, Al, but I'm afraid I never heard of her. Before she got married, about a year ago, her name was Van Doren. Ginny Van Doren? Yes. Oh, well, now that's something else again. And I mean something. Well, then you do know her. One of the most delectable bits of feminine pulchritude I ever ran up against. Believe me, a young man's fancy didn't have to wait for spring to turn to thoughts of her. Now, what's that mean? Oh, Al, even I had serious ideas about that gal at one time. Oh? Yeah, right after college. Isn't every kid of that age intrigued with the idea of marrying into a fortune? And very beautiful. At least she was when I knew her. Still is, Johnny. So she's married to somebody by the name of Haskell, huh? Gordon Haskell. They live on Birchbrook Road, down in Bronxville, New York. Funny. What? Well, when I knew her, that blonde charmer didn't have eyes for anybody but Paul Snowden. Who's Paul Snowden? Childhood sweetheart, that sort of thing. Poor boy, making good on his own, you know the bit. Ah, uh, yes, too proud to marry her because of her money. But she swore that she'd never marry anybody else, that he was her one true love. But I, uh, I guess she changed her mind. What did she want to see me about, Al? She didn't say. She did make it clear, however, that it has to do with some of the family insurance. Well, that's as good an excuse as any. Well, then do you want to run on down there? For a longing look at the gorgeous Ginny Van Doren? But it'll cost you money, Al. <laughs> Listen, Johnny, with the premiums we get for all the insurance she carries, life, house, property, and so on, the sky's the limit. Brother, have you stuck your neck out? Well, now, that doesn't mean you have Albert, to... Albert, I'll be in touch. <laughs> Bailey in the intriguing adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, Act One of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the New Britain Mutual Insurance Company Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the wayward heiress matter. I decided it might be handy to have my own car along for this one, so expense account item one, four dollars and a quarter for a tank full of gas. I picked up the freeway and headed south and west to fashionable Westchester County, New York. To me, Bronxville has always been one of New York's most charming suburbs. Only about 20 miles north of the big city, it's full of beautiful homes with lots of trees and expensive landscape properties. There's a lot of wealth in Bronxville. The Haskell home on Birchbrook Road was a huge English type affair, built of stone and stucco, the kind of place that'll last 100 years. 18 or 20 rooms, I'd guess, and surrounded by well-kept lawns and flower gardens, oak and sycamore trees and neatly trimmed hedges. Yep, a big hunk of the Van Doren oil money must have gone into it, unless young Haskell was mighty rich. Virginia, looking every bit as beautiful as I'd remembered her from college back in the Midwest, greeted me like a long-lost, well, brother, darn it. And Johnny, I'm so glad you could come. I... I'm worried, sick. Worried about what, Jenny? Gordon, my husband. Well, uh, look, it's uh, none of my business, but it... Uh, well, it kind of surprised me to learn you'd married somebody other than Paul Snowden. It's Paul who has me worried, Johnny. Oh? Yes. How? Well, back in the old days in college, I wasn't interested in anybody in the world but Paul. I mean, seriously. Yeah, I remember. The rest of us couldn't get to first base with you. I loved him, Johnny. And I hoped that as soon as he could get established in a business of some kind, he'd ask me to marry him. Well, what stopped him, Jenny? Money. When Father died and all the Van Doren money came to me, Paul suddenly changed. He stopped seeing me. He even avoided me. So then, well, I guess what I did was make a mistake. What was that? I went to see him at his little plant there in Chicago. Chicago? That's where we were living then. 
And Johnny, the only reason he stayed there was to be close to me. So you went to see him? Yes. And I proposed to him. Oh? Also. Well, this was the big mistake. I offered to finance the machine tool business that he was trying so hard to build up. But he didn't like that and told me so. I'm afraid there was quite a scene there. You've just been little... looking down your nose at me all these years. It's been nothing but pity. Paul! Yeah, poor timid little me. Needs help. Maybe needs mothering by somebody who pities him. By somebody who can afford to support him. Paul, that isn't true. Then why do you come offering help, offering money? I don't want pity. Somebody holding up my head for me. I've got to work this out alone. It may take me a long time, but I'm not going to... Oh, I'm sorry, Jenny, but don't you see I love you? I'll never love anybody else. Then why don't you let me Don't you understand? I'll never get anywhere on your charity. You're feeling sorry for me. Paul, darling, please. All right. All right, the less we see of each other now, the better. Maybe sometime, but... Well, no, not now. Find somebody else, Jenny. Somebody who can give you the things you need and want. Uh Uh-huh. A little too much pride for his own good, I'd say. It upset me terribly, Johnny. Especially when he told me to go out and find somebody else. But uh, I take it you did. Then Gordon came along. Sort of caught me on the rebound, I guess. Tall, good-looking. He fell in love with me the first time we ever met. I guess he kind of swept me off my feet. But now that the honeymoon's over... He's been wonderful to me. And I love Gordon, Johnny. I love him very much. As much as Paul? Not perhaps in the same way. But we're very happy together. And there's never been any strain or tension because of this this difference in our fortunes. Gordon isn't wealthy either? Well, he hasn't what I have course. But he manages to get along. And I'm being a good wife to him. Oh, I'm sure you are, Jenny. And don't you see if Paul, because of his jealousy, were to kill Gordon... Jenny, you mean you honestly believe he might? Yes. That's exactly what I mean. That's why I sent for you. But good heavens, gal. Oh, Johnny, you've got to stop him. Now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Wayward Heiress Matter. All right, now, Jenny, listen to me. It's true, Johnny, I'm sure of it. Paul Snowden has come here to kill my husband. He's... He's told you as much. Haven't you been listening to me? Well, of course I have. Maybe my marriage to Gordon was on the rebound, on the spur of the moment. Call it anything you like, but it was Paul who turned me down. At least for the time being. I told you what he said. And simply because of a misguided sense of pride, because you had money and he didn't. Yes. Well, how did Paul take it uh, when he learned that you were going to marry Gordon, I mean? He was terribly angry. He made all sorts of wild threats. Well, now, that doesn't necessarily... He said that he would kill anybody else who married me, and he will, Johnny. Does he know Gordon? He's never seen him. But he wants to kill him? Oh, Ginny, that doesn't make any sense. Don't you understand? It was to get away from Paul that Gordon and I came here to get married and settle down. Well, because you were afraid you might still be in love with Paul. It isn't a very nice thing to say, Johnny. But it could be true, couldn't it? Is Gordon in business here in the East? Well, he... I've helped him to start one, Johnny. A little importing business. What did he do before? Jenny? Well, his family had quite a bit of money once. But they lost it all in some bad speculations. And Well, if you must know, Gordon just sort of played around for a while. Did Paul know all this? I don't know. Because if he did... Maybe you shouldn't blame the poor, hard-working guy for not liking him. But Gordon is good, and he's good to me. He's good to you. Seems to me you're the one who You mustn't say that, Johnny. He is good to me. And he's all I have now. If only Paul hadn't found out where we've come to live. Oh, look, Jenny, I'm an insurance investigator, not a love counselor, and... Oh, what's the matter? Don't you believe me? All I've told you... Or are you just trying to be very cold-blooded about this? Shinny. All right, then. This happens to be a cold-blooded insurance matter. For the simple reason that Gordon's life is insured. And if you have no heart, 
If all you can think about is business, all right. It's your job to keep Pa from killing Gordon. Now, listen, Ginny, you've been married nearly a year. Nothing's happened, nothing at all. Yet now, all of a sudden... Because Paul has come here, he telephoned me. And there can be only one reason why he's here. I doubt that. But where is he? In New York, at a hotel. What hotel? He didn't say. Well, is he coming out here to the house? He said he wouldn't come until he could be sure that Gordon was here. And then? Then to prepare for the worst. Those were his very words, Johnny. Prepare for the worst. Wasn't Gordon here when he phoned? Yes, but I didn't tell him that. Where's Gordon now? Over in Larchmont at the Beverly Arms. In hiding, in other words. I want him to stay there until something can be done about Paul, that's all. <sighs> well, if Paul's so all fired determined... He is, Johnny. He always was. That could be a pretty admirable quality, Jenny. Of course it is. But when he's determined to do such a horrible... Johnny... Johnny, I don't understand you, the way you're taking all this. Are you going to help me or aren't you? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, Jenny, I'll see what I can do. If by any chance what you suspect is true, if Paul really has come here to get of him... Of course he has. Paul doesn't give up, no matter what he set out to do. Which is to say that sooner or later, if you'd kept your head, if you hadn't gone off the deep end, if you had waited and married him, I Jenny... Oh, I know, I should have. I should have waited for him, no matter how long it took, and... Yeah? And what? No. Johnny, I didn't mean that. I'm married to Gordon now, and I must protect him. Okay, then. The first thing to do is get him over here. What? Sure. If Paul's staying undercover, it's the only way to bring him out in the open. But if anything happens to like Gordon... Like you say, it's my job to see that it doesn't. I'll see you later. <laughs> Like I've said many times before, in this business of mine, you run into some real wildies, and this was one of them. Made me feel like an advice to the love shorn column. And it was pretty obvious that Ginny was still in love with Paul, that she was sorry she had married and was supporting this Gordon Haskell, who, incidentally, must have been a smart cookie to have caught her on the rebound, latched onto her and her fortune. But she'd made her bed, and by golly, out of nothing but stubborn pride, she was going to lie in it. It was well after dark by the time I left her, and as I walked out to my car, I decided that what I'd better do first was to locate Paul Snowden somewhere in some hotel in New York City. Find out what this whole crazy affair was really all about. But then as I reached for the door handle on my car... Just a minute. Huh? Yeah? I've been waiting for you. Oh? Who are you? As if I couldn't guess. Mister, I found out all about you, why you came here. Me? Oh, well, if just you don't imagine. believe me, take a look at these photostats from the police files in half a dozen western states. Well, now, just, just take it easy. Let me put on the dash light so I can take a look at them. You'll have plenty of time to look at them when I'm through with you. Just Mr. I want to kill you. All right, now. You want some more? Johnny, what on earth's going on out there? Huh? Johnny? What? Johnny! Oh, no. Paul! Paul, what have you done to Johnny Dollar? Johnny! Oh, dear, this is terrible. Oh. Well, it ain't exactly good. That was Paul. I saw him. Yeah, so I figured. He must have found out that I sent for you. Why, if I hadn't come out of the house to see what the noise was all about, he might... Don't you see, Johnny? Don't you believe me now when I say he's come here to kill Gordon? Uh, Jenny, I guess if you didn't convince me, Paul has. <laughs> of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. I went back into the house with Ginny's help and a good stiff drink plus her tender menstruations brought me back to normal. I suppose I could make all sorts of excuses about having been caught off guard, but I won't. Paul Snowden had a good pair of fists and he knew how to use them. My plan had been to call on the New York City police for help in locating Paul, but now this had suddenly become a personal matter. And yet... Wait a minute. Ginny. 
Yes, Johnny. Are you feeling... Listen, all... didn't you tell me that Paul and your husband Gordon didn't know each other, had never met? Yes. What about those papers, the photostats? Papers? Photos... And we've been thinking that Paul jumped me because he'd found out you'd called me in to protect Gordon. Of course. Well, it just happens we were wrong. Oh, Johnny, I don't understand. Listen, I'll be right back. But, Johnny, he may still be out there somewhere. I wouldn't be at all surprised. Well, but, Johnny, don't you... I found no sign of Paul or the papers he'd shoved at me. But I was certain that he was still in the neighborhood, waiting. But not for me. I jumped into my car, drove away, then circled around the block, parked, and sneaked into the house the back way. Johnny! I thought it was Gordon coming in this back door. I phoned him that Paul had been here. Yeah? What'd he say? Only that until Paul is taken care of, he'd better get out of town. But, Johnny, that's such a... Oh, great. And yet, if he plans on being away for any length of time... Excuse me a minute. Yeah, there was a chance, a bare chance, that this whole thing could come to a head very quickly, with a bit of luck. I opened the front door, then called out into the darkness beyond the porch. Paul? Paul Snowden? This is Johnny Dollar. If you're out there, stick around. Now listen, I'm leaving this front door unlocked, so use your own judgment. I went back into the library. Standing there with Ginny was a man, a few years older, slightly gray around the temples. He had a worried, furtive look about his eyes. He was momentarily startled when I walked in on him. Johnny. Gordon, this is Johnny Dollar. Hiya, Gordon. He sneaked in the back way, Johnny. But I'm not staying around to get killed. Now listen, Virginia. Gordon, it'll be all right now. No, I don't know who Dollar is or why you've called him in. But I'm not staying around here with Paul Snowden gunning for me. You're afraid of him, Gordon? Wouldn't you be... Come on, Virginia. Open up the safe. You've got plenty of money in it, I know. But look, darling... Come on, I... get it for me. Give it to me. But to run away like this... Oh, because Paul wouldn't run away. You know that isn't what I... Give mean. me the money, Virginia. Or do you want a dead husband on your hands? Well... Now, listen, Gordon. You listen. This is none of your business. I wouldn't be too sure of that. Well, I am, Virginia. Now, just a minute. Will you keep out of this? No. Oh, yes, you will. See what I mean? Gordon, that gun... You... Give me that money so I can save my life. Put that thing down, Gordon. Stand back, Dollar. I'll pull this trigger. Brother, that's what you think. Yes? Oh, I'll kill you. Oh. Oh, thanks, Paul. Oh. Oh. I ain't low, Dollar. I'm afraid he'll live. Yeah, he'll be okay. Should have killed him, I guess. But I'd rather see him face the courts. Oh, what are you talking about? Those photostats you have? Yeah. Police files all over the West. He has a record as long as your arm, under various names. Wealthy women married them, took their money. Oh, no. Yes, Jenny. And some of them... Well, he killed them. Paul, I didn't know. I, uh... I didn't know. I'm sorry, Dollar, about what happened outside earlier, but in the darkness, I thought you were Gordon. It's uh, okay, Paul. You've uh, more than made up for it. Well, maybe Paul and Jenny will finally get together for keeps. I don't know. I don't even know whether I care. I'm just glad I wasn't involved. That is, any more than I was. Expense account total, including mileage of my car back to Hartford, a lousy ten bucks. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Now here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a sweet little old lady... Involved in one of the dirtiest rackets I know. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Les Tremaine, Sam Edwards, and James McCallion. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. 
This is Dan Coverly speaking.